I'm here with my new friend, Shannon Cunningham. How are you, hey, Shannon? Hey, y'all. I'm doing well. How are you? She's from Texas, so hey, y'all. Yes, gotta have the southern accent. There you go. And you just got your hair done. I did. I went to the I dry mean, you bar. are ready. You are camera ready, so I, I love it. There we go. There we go. There we go. So, Shannon, how are you? You just flew in. I Literally did. just landed. I did. We have five pieces of luggage which was a lot to carry in the airport. For just but two of you. Yes, you just and the two of you. And it mainly was for me to show all the great books tomorrow and all the great items. Awesome. So Shannon, you can't see right now, but she has like dozens of books laid out on here for a session. So if you're watching live from home, you're going to want to make sure you tune around because she's going to be presenting all about what's in her classroom library. You can kind of see them there all over the stage there. Now, Shannon, you have your biggest cheerleader with you here. We have an all-star theme for Here's TI. In the dugout with my friend Katie is your mom. So yes. Everyone say hi to Shannon's mom. Her biggest cheerleader right there. Katie, how you doing down there? Good, how's it going? It's going good. All right, so I'm here with Shannon's biggest fan, her mom. <laughs> so obviously Shannon has a really big love of books. How, how did that come about? Well, I grew up, my parents blessed me with a love of reading and I passed that on to my kids and read books all the time and it stuck. Awesome. Um, so you guys are just here together, some mother-daughter time. What do you get? What are your plans other than watching her present? Um, I'm her assistant this week, so I'm doing whatever she tells me to do. <laughs> I love it. So do you have any advice for Shannon as she does her session tonight? Yes, just be yourself, sweetie. Awesome. So cute. All right, back to you, Chris. <laughs> I love it. I mean, if you can't bring your mom to your session, like a mom's has to be, my mom is probably watching every single episode. Yes. Right, she's probably in the comments right now. So, <laughs> hey mom, she's definitely in the comments. So, so excited your mom's here to share the love of reading. Yes. Are you guys excited? Woo! There we go, back in the dugout now. Shannon, we're talking about all about your classroom library, something I know you're passionate about, I'm passionate about, that we've talked about before. What do you, th why is it so important to have such a great classroom library? And what do you think is the most important feature of a classroom library? Well, I don't want to give it all away because we're going to talk about that a little bit okay, in my presentation. Okay, okay. But I think the most important part is that you have books that kids can connect to, um, that they can identify with, and books that interest them and keep them coming back for more. Awesome. So I know you brought some right yeah. here. Do you have them right down here. there? There you go. She has them right there. <laughs> so I'll hold them for you if you want. Which one do you want to start with? Um, let's start with Little Roja Riding Hood. Okay, so Shannon's going to share top three books. I mean, she literally pulled out a hundred. She's like, I yeah. can share this one. I can share this one. I can share this one. I was like, okay, let's, let's pick three. We'll start with three. But she's going to share more in her mini session and if yep. you're watching at home on Facebook you're gonna get the whole thing so stay tuned for yes. that so let's talk about this one first okay so Little Roja Riding Hood and my amazing librarian Mrs. Salter introduced this to me um, so this book is in English but it incorporates different Spanish words in it and in the back it tells you what the different words mean oh, awesome. and especially if you have students who Spanish is their native language they get so proud when you're reading this book and their ears just perk up and they get so proud to share with their classmates how to properly pronounce the different words um, and the kids get really excited to learn the different words so I highly recommend um, this little twist on this classic fairy tale. Now, all these books, I forgot to mention this, you're super passionate about including diversity in your classroom library yes. and different topics that maybe would not be found in your normal picture books or just yes. a book order that you get. Yeah. These are books that are specific to different lessons or different things that you want your students to know about, which yeah. I absolutely love. So that's <laughs> awesome. So which one do you want to go next? Um, let's go to The Colors of Us. Okay, here we go. Okay, so The Colors of Us is about a little girl named Lena and her mother, who's an artist, and her mother is uh, painting her. And she says, uh, her mother's describing her as this beautiful cinnamon color. And she says, well, no, Mom, brown is brown. And her mom says, no, it's not. There's all these beautiful colors. So they go walking through the neighborhood, and they admire all the beautiful different skin tones throughout their neighborhood um, and just appreciate them. And then she goes back, and she mixes all these different paint colors to paint her friends um, and just to show that diversity. So I really appreciate that about that book. And I think it's super important that our students are seeing different books that have situations that maybe they've been through or mm -hmm. characters that they recognize that are similar yeah. to them or their family. Yeah, so so I absolutely with. love that. All right. And the last one before I send you over there. Yes. Okay. So Maddie's Fridge, I'm not going to lie. I kind of cried by myself the first time I read it. I almost cried when she was just telling me what <laughs> it's about. And I'm like on my phone, adding it to my Amazon yes. cart now. So Maddie's Fridge is about a little girl named Sophia. Um, and she has a friend named Maddie and they're playing at Maddie's house and she noticed that Maddie does not have any food in her fridge. Um, and Maddie begs Sophia not to tell her secret that there's no food in the fridge at her house. 
So uh, Sophia is really worried about her friend. She's trying to sneak food from home in her backpack to bring to Maddie, and the food keeps spoiling. And so she finally comes to the terms with the fact that she cannot help Maddie on her own. So she decides to tell her mom this secret, and they wind up being able to help her, um, and they still stay friends. And so I think it's a great lesson about um, some secrets are meant to be shared and told to an adult, uh, and just to help one another, and just to notice those different things. And really important with read alouds that we have those messages that you're talking about. Yes. So, okay, now before I send you to talk about your classroom library, <laughs> I wanna play a game. Are you okay. ready? Okay, so this game is called What's in Your Classroom Library, the Chris edition, okay? All right, so the Chris I'm gonna, edition. I'm, I'm, gonna gonna say, I'm gonna say a number of different things that our awesome team, Holly and Kitty, came up with different things that you might find in a classroom library. Okay. But I can't say the words that are on my card, right. so you have to guess. Kind of like catchphrase, okay. okay? And we're gonna see if you can do it, okay? All right. So I'm gonna set a minute on my phone, maybe. Alexa. Ale Ale <laughs> yeah, I need Alexa. I guess, I guess I could have asked Siri, but okay. So here we go. One minute. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Okay, we'll see how many you can do. Okay. Okay, first one. Okay, these are things um, that you would put the books on. No, uh, uh, it's Shelves? flat. No, it's fl desks. It's flat. Tables? You sit on it. Oh, we have a couch. Chairs. Yes, yeah, tables, tables, <laughs> tables. Okay, this is something you type on. Keyboard. No, uh, the whole thing. The keyboard plus the oh, what? Oh, computer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, this is something that you could get in the mail. It's kind of a flimsy material, but you read it Paper. still. No, no, no. You read it, and it has like, articles in it. No, kind Magazine. of. Magazine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, these are the things that the books go on, so you line them up nicely Shelves. on the, what kind of? Bookshelves. Yep. Um, okay. These are, oh, this can be in a library, but it might be one if you want to watch something. Like, you want to watch a... TV? Uh, no. Like a long feature. Oh, projector. No, like a long feature film. It would be called a... Movie? Yep. Okay. Um, these are books that are longer and are split up in different sections that are called... Series? No. Nope. Chapter books? Yep. Um, okay, these are books that you would put headphones on and. Audio books? Yep. And oh, these are, you sit on them, they're really comfy, they're filled with different Flexible things. Flexible seating? Um, uh, yes, kind of. It's um, squishy. They're little things that are inside. Bean bags. Yes, yes, that was the last one. Do we get it? Yes, you did it. Awesome. <laughs> Great job. So I'm going to send Shannon over there to get ready. Thank All you so right. much for hanging out with me, Shannon. <laughs> Awesome. So, if you want to follow, there we go. Well, I love a good hug. I love a good hug. Thank you guys. For, thank you guys for following along today. So, I'm just going to share with you a little bit about what's in my library. So, um, when we're thinking about building our classroom libraries, it's important because what is one of the most powerful resources that can impact a child's learning in all different subjects, um, in math, science social studies in their social skills, um, and that is books. So those are extremely important, and that's why it's important that not just only utilizing the library that's in our school, but making sure our classroom library um, is stocked as well. Uh, one quote that is from one of my favorite books that I really recommend any teacher to read, the Read Aloud Handbook, the seventh edition by uh, Jim Trelease. He just released his last one uh, before he retired, but this is one of my favorite quotes when I think about how we want to build our classroom library. Every time we read to a child, we're sending a pleasure message to the child's brain. You could even call it a commercial, conditioning the child to associate books and print with pleasure. So that being said, I ask myself, and I want you guys to ask yourself when you're thinking about your classroom library, what kind of commercial does your classroom library advertise for reading? Um, is it one that keeps them coming back? Is it one that gets them excited? Uh, is it one that makes them want to come visit your library? So that's an important question that I keep in mind. Um, Earlier, Chris asked about what's important to have in a classroom library. Um, and so I talk about just some goals uh, that I have for myself in building my classroom library. And I mentioned some of this earlier. Uh, one main goal is to have books that build and teach meaningful uh, connections. Those text to self, text to text, and text to world connections are extremely important. Uh, so that's one goal I keep in mind when I'm looking for books. Um, also, books that highlight different characters, experiences, and really just empower our young readers, like just some of the books that I showed you earlier. Um, and like I said, books that keep the kids coming back for more. We want to build a love for reading um, that transcends through all the grades. So now for the books. And I've got many up here. Um, I, my hands are kind of full. I wanted to show you some today, but I've got a microphone. I've got uh, this little clicker here, so bear with me, but you'll be able to see them on the screen. OK, so this one is awesome, and I am going to pick it up. It is called Baby Monkey, Private Eye, um, another amazing recommendation from my librarian. If you're not best friends with your librarian, you need to like do that right away. <laughs> um, so this one looks like a chapter book. It is a chapter book. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's really big. Do you want to show them just like how thick it is? I mean, what kindergartner or first grade and even second grader would be so proud to read a book that big. But when you open it up, it has some really simple sentences in it with sight words, um, different chapters about baby monkeys solving different crimes. Um, and every time he goes to solve a crime, he realizes he forgot his pants. 
so he fumbles over himself getting his pants on and that just makes the kids burst out laughing and always want to come back for more. So I highly recommend this one, um, Baby Monkey, Private Eye. And after you've read the first chapter, you can honestly have kids come up and read it with their classmates because it follows the same storyline and has a lot of those sight words. So definitely recommend that one. Um, the next one, as you heard earlier, I did get my hair done. <laughs> um, so obviously I love a little glam, but this book is called Mary Had a Little Glam. And it's a little fun twist on um, the typical Mary Had a Little Lamb story. Uh, and so it's all about her being glamorous. It has some great vocabulary words in there. But then at the end, she realizes being glamorous might look a little bit different on the playground. So that's an exciting one as well. Mary Had a Little Glam. Okay, this one is also extremely funny. I think it's right there. Um, so it's meant to be read like you have the world's worst cold. So it is called Bob Not Bob. And it's about this little boy and he has the world's worst cold. And so he's laying in bed and his nose is all stuffed up and he has his mom at home, his sister and his dog who happens to be named Bob. So he's laying in bed, he's miserable. Every time he calls out for his mom, it goes Bob and the dog comes running. And so he keeps shouting out Bob Not Bob and he's saying, um, hot and sweaty when he's hot and sweaty. And so it's just a really funny book that I think anyone can relate to, especially when they come back to kindergarten and they're getting all those germs and they're getting sick for the first time. Um, it's really quite funny. I mentioned Little Roja Writing Hood earlier. We talked about that one. Um, this one is also a really great one that's now on Amazon. Um, it's The Girl Who Thought in Pictures, the story of Dr. Temple Grandin. Um, if you're not familiar with her, I highly recommend you teachers to look her up on TED Talks. Uh, she's a great TED Talk, but this book is about her growing up with autism and what that looked like for her and just all the amazing things that she's done for the cattle and farming industry um, and just the way uh, her mind thinks. So it gives uh, really good empathy and exposure to students um, in working with someone or in having a classmate who might have autism. So. I really highly recommend that book. Papa's Mechanical Fish. I love using this one. I don't know if it sounds up here. You see it? <laughs> um, this is a great one for uh, just steam and building that grit and perseverance. Uh, this book is all about a uh, little girl and her papa's building this mechanical fish. And it takes him, I think, seven different tries. Um, but he doesn't give up and it shows that every time that he failed, he also learned um, a new feature he could add to it. So by the time he gets the last one to work, it has all these really cool features. So love that one. Um, another great one for STEAM um, in Building Grit and Perseverance is What Do You Do With a Problem by Kobe Yamada. Um, a lot of our kids face problems not only in science but just in their world as well. Um, and so this book just talks about how you can work through that and how uh, problems should be seen as a blessing because you learn from them. So appreciate that one. Um, as well as with the STEAM, uh, What Do You Do With an Idea by the same author. Um, just thinking uh, in innovative ways and uh, what do you do when you have that idea? And what if it's different from what your friends think? What if you're scared to try it? So that one's really empowering about trying to do things differently. Um, and I think it talks a little bit too about, um, I can't remember if it's in this book, but think about even like the first lunchbox. Who was the weird kid who brought, you know, a box filled with ice packs? And who was that kid who had to think out of the box like that? So I really like that book. Iggy Peck Architect. Um, building. We want our kids to be little engineers. And so this is a great book. And I also want to point out that this author, I don't remember her name off the top of my head, um, Andrea Beatty, if you follow her on Pinterest, she has different boards for the different books that she's written. And she has all different activities that go along um, with the books and just uh, activities that other teachers have tried. So definitely check her out on Pinterest. Ooh, and this is another new one, I think. One's over there. Um, it is called How to Code a Sandcastle, and this one's fairly new. Uh, coding is something that I myself am still having to learn um, with the kids, and this is a really great book for, honestly, adults and kids, just explaining what coding looks like, and it uses a bunch of the different coding terms, like looping. Um, so I highly recommend this book for um, STEAM and just for teaching the kids. Uh, we know the world's moving towards technology-based uh, jobs, so that's a great one. I don't have this one with me, um, but this book, This Is How We Do It, One Day in the Lives of Seven Kids from Around the World. Um, it's just a way that you can take kids around the world outside of your classroom and show them just uh, the different cultures and the way people uh, live their lives around the world. Ooh, this is a really good one. Um, the Name Jar. This is about a little girl um, who comes to America and all of her classmates are encouraging her to pick a new name. 
And so she goes through kind of this identity crisis, um, trying to pick out a new name, and then finally she comes to realize that it is her name and she's going to be proud of it. So she chooses, um, at the end of the day, you know, all these classmates are putting in uh, name suggestions, and she decides to keep her name. And she has one little friend who supports her um, and finds a way, uh, has a friend write a uh, friend in her native language that um, just showed that really sweet empathy. So I highly recommend that book. Um, I mentioned The Colors of Us, great one. Ooh, this is another good one. Um, I don't know if I have this one out somewhere. Uh, we Shall Overcome. It's a beautiful book about this beautiful song. Um, they don't know where it originated from. Uh, sometime during um, the era of slavery, but it just the way that this song has moved through the years, through the centuries of all different motions, all the way up until our very first African-American president. Um, and there's just beautiful illustrations. And then you can always go on YouTube and play the song. So this is definitely a big hit um, every year with my kiddos. Ooh, we talked about that one. Um, and then Lost and Found Cat. This is based on a true story of a refugee family who is fleeing Iraq. And as they were uh, coming over on the boat, they had to sneak in their kitten, their cat. And um, when they're on the shores of Greece, it escaped. And they looked for it, they looked for it, they couldn't find it, and eventually they had to leave. Um, and people uh, on the shores of Greece found this cat. And through the power of the internet and social media, um, they were able to reunite the cat with the family. I believe it was four months later because the family had gone to Norway. Um, but this is a really sweet book, uh, just, and it kind of just briefly talks about um, their travels as a refugee. Um, really touching story. And this is the last one I'm going to share with you today. Uh, I teach in a classroom that has students who have a variety of native languages spoken at home, and I think it's really important that we show them that we want to embrace their language and their culture. And so uh, if you have a student, I highly, highly recommend, you can get these books for like probably $10 or less on Amazon. Um, so I had some students who spoke Vietnamese, and so I bought my first book of Vietnamese words, and it was so cool to see them come out of their shells and teach myself and their classmates these words. And it was also cool that, that because they could see, I can't always pronounce words perfectly, and the students got to feel that empathy of, okay, sometimes it's really hard to pronounce some words. Um, so I'd recommend uh, just that you invest in those books for your classroom, for your students. So. Those are all that I have to share today. I appreciate y'all following along. Um, like he mentioned earlier, you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Facebook as well. I'm definitely more active on Instagram. It's primary shenanigans. So thanks, y'all.